Thank you very much for joining us. This is Strictly Politics on Silver Bay News 24. And as usual on the show, we keep you uh, up, updated and bring you up to speed with all of the big issues in the polity over the last one week. Everything that you need to know happening in the politics, uh, in economics, in the um, security issues, all of the big issues in the news in the course of the week. My name is Hakim. Mishola, Nigeria is 61, and all of the whole of Nigeria is celebrating, and October 1st, of course, has been declared a public holiday. The president is expected to give us a speech on October 1st, which is um, Friday morning, and um, I believe that um, we would know exactly uh, the scorecard of this administration, and of course, how far Nigeria has gone in there. The Court of Appeal has finally accepted and recognized Lagos State as a party in the appeal filed by the FRS against the River State Government concerning the dispute on value added tax uh, VAT. We will look at that on the show today as well. The PDP governors, or if you like, governors under the platform of the People's Democratic Party, PDP, have sat, they have voted 9 to 3 to say the chairmanship, the national chairmanship seat of the party would go to the north. What that uh, implies and what that will mean for the party going into the next year elections we will also try to shed light on, on the program today. In Anambra, so much is going on. The killings in Anambra and the, the, the height of it was the killing of Dr. Chike Akunyeli, the husband of the former uh, DG of NAFDAQ, who was um, killed by unknown government. The governor of that state has uh, announced a bounty of 20 million naira. Uh, for anyone who is able to give meaningful information or useful information to apprehending all of the people behind the killings and the destruction of property in that state. Counterterrorism is also in the news. Uh, the military is saying that they have arrested, they have killed 85 terrorists in the last couple of um, days and that they have also arrested 43 alleged collaborators. We we'll also look at um, the counterterrorism um, operations and see whether indeed uh, we should be excited at this time. Again, this is strictly politics. We'll take a short break. When we come back, I'll let you into uh, my panel today on the show. Don't go anywhere. You're welcome back. You're still on to Strictly Politics on Silver Bed News 24. And Wilson Omoni is in the house today on the show. Wilson. Great to be back on the show, Hakim. And uh, definitely a lot to talk about in the polity of things, especially with Nigeria clocking 61. Okay, great. We also have uh, the Chief Executive Officer, Royal Times, my very good friend. I remember in the days, our uh, days in the material <laughs> call, uh, in the show, Roti <laughs> Thomas is very much in the house today. Good to see you, my friend. Thank you very much. Ali Great. Okay, now let's start with the Nigeria's 61st anniversary. Um, whether you like it or not, people used to say, like, look, Nigeria is still a fairly young country. We compare ourselves with the United States of America. We, uh, I mean, we're just 61 after independence. We still have a long way to go. We shouldn't compare ourselves with the big nations. Uh, we'll get there slowly but surely. Some people say, look, indeed, we are probably still uh, under some kind of colony you know, because um, our economy still largely depends on aids, on, on borrowings, and on so many things. Uh, some people say, look, just, just, just be grateful. Let's just be happy that at least we still have one nation called Nigeria, even though right now there are several agitations going on uh, across the country from many quarters saying, look, we need to discuss this union and say, indeed, if um, it's worth, you know, moving on with. We'll see. You know, there's quite a lot to look at um, from this 61st anniversary since independence that the country has been going through. First of all, uh, you mentioned the unity of the country. I think the country has been more tested than ever within the past four to five years in terms of unity than probably the first 
1960, uh, uh, separating, the, of course, the Biafra War uh, that came within that period. Many people are definitely beginning to question, you know, the way the country is currently being run and how everyone is being carried along in the process. To say that we are a young nation to other developed countries, there might be some truth in that. But you also have to consider that many of these countries did not have the ability and access to information that we now have today. With the way information and access to the other developed countries that Nigeria now has, it shouldn't take us the same amount of time that it took the likes of the US, the UK, Australia to get to where they are today for us to do the same thing. And so when we make this argument, we also have to remember that there was a stone age where, of course, mails had to be sent from days before we could do all of these things. Let's take, for example, process of conducting elections. You would expect that by now, with all of the modes of communications that we are having within us, with many of even our lawmakers who are opposing to the electronic transmission of results, who now transfer money via their mobile phones, you would expect that they would want to see a semblance of that come into place when elections are being taken place. So no one really has to be at the polling units to know what is going on. Many of them go into hiding when elections come around and, you know, they come out when the directions are being declared. There's a reason why. They are afraid of being in the, in the mix of the action when elections are actually taking place. Why is that? Why shouldn't lawmakers be able to walk the streets even when elections are being taken place? As it is today, we will still go into another general elections with a general curfew in the country. Is that progress? You know, you, you just mentioned one good example about elections and how inclusive elections can be with the aid of technology and the experiences we have seen from across the world. In the US, for example, there's, there's this, you can vote by mail. Uh, I remember that for many days, in fact, even before the general elections, the vote for males had been counted. You can vote wherever you are. In, in, I mean, as an American, whatever country that you live in, you can participate in the general elections and you can cast your ballot, whatever that is. That, 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 that. So why, why, why can't we take advantage? That, that's just one example. There are several other you know, examples. I, I just picked that up from what you said. It's a great country that I cannot even agree with, with you. My brother, that uh, we are still young, at the age of 61. It's a long age, more than six decades. <laughs> when you look at, let's try to atomize some issues from the economic aspect. The dollar rate is around 5.75 to one dollar. Sefa is now more expensive than the Naira. You know, I used to work in the, <laughs> back, back in the early 90s, and there was this man that used to sell something with a Ghanaian one product you know I don't even know what the name is right now it, at that time they wrote um, 700 cities or, or something on the bottom so the first day I saw it I was ah <laughs> my Ghanaian colleague now said no now that's 20 naira now so, <laughs> 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 you know she said that was the first time I had the chance to see the comparison you know, between, between the, the and the naira and as we speak, I heard that even the city is giving Naira a run for its first So if you, if, you, if you look at the economic aspect of Nigeria, let's, let's break it down. Maybe be able to talk about security, be able to talk about judiciary, be able to talk about the politician. Because the, the most funny aspect of it is that most of the product who are either senator or minister or house of reps or member of here and there, they are product of Nigeria. They are not made in abroad. They know the problem. They are brought up in the society. So why are they, why are they refuse to tackle the issue? In economy, I won't say to anybody that is a zero. To me, I could remember almost 25 or 30 years ago, when I wanted to purchase a scale to London, I think I went to a bank with almost 120 naira. And they gave me nothing less than almost 100 and something pounds. Almost 30 something years ago. Yeah. You can imagine. Okay, gentlemen, are we saying that we don't have certain things to celebrate? Certain things to say, well, <laughs> I mean, give or take. Well, the unity we should, of the country is celebrated. The unity of the country is something that should be celebrated. That Nigeria hasn't divided into entities as it is today is something that we have to applaud. Officially? Officially. All right. That's <laughs> <what we know. laughs> and we also have to consider the fact that, you know, we have made strides in terms of technology as well um, compared to many years ago and as a matter of fact compared to most of our neighbors in Africa 
Nigeria has made a lot of progress in terms of communications, technology, and you know, even our exploits, most of our products here who go abroad can do so much better uh, you know, than their counterparts from other African countries. So there are positives to Nigeria. In terms of sports as well, we, ha we have been a beacon of light from the West African region. Of course, we cannot compete with our Eastern brothers because they tend to dominate on uh, you know, the football you know, aspects. We, 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 we have what you call equipment. Yes. We have what you call human resources. We have what it takes to lead the sport, not only in Africa, in the world, but we have what we call mismanagement. I won't deceive you. I don't know the idea you are talking, the way you are looking at it. If I can look at it from the, my ego eyes, I could let you know that, well, it's my country. It's the country that we need to pray for. But I'm telling you the reality. Talking about security, if there's no security in any society, in the country, I don't think it's worth to live because a lot of things will move away from that country. Democratically wise as well, we also have to be considerate of the fact that we've not had a coup. And we are seeing all our neighboring countries attempted mm -hmm. coup or unsuccessful coup. So that is an indication that something, we are, is, working. something is working, right? And um, there is a process, even though the process is still being questioned. Uh, so we have to celebrate that, that, you know, we are able to actually transfer power since the 20, 20, uh, 2000s, 1999 to date. And that is a positive, that we haven't had one dictatorial leadership between that time and now, as we know most other African countries tend to have issues with. So that's a positive for us to look at. And we also have to look at the strength that we have grown in terms of our legislative action. The legislature, uh, you know, when in the 1990s, uh, 1999, wasn't as rigorous as it is today. Now we are seeing lawmakers more participative in the process and also yeah. reviewing most of the laws that were created then so as to have you know more insight let's look at lagos and uh, river state now challenging the status quo from 1999 elections yeah. this is to show that we are actually making strides to say you know well, what the, it, the template that we have then cannot work now so we are making progress but now that you have that mentioned you have brought in the the, the vat issue let's 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 just go straight into it um the court of appeal has now accepted Lagos as a party, you know, in the, the, the appeal by the FRS against the River State government, um, against the judgment of the High Court of River State, or the, the fair High Court sitting in River State, actually, in Port Harcourt. Uh, so what it means is that Lagos State, you know, is now a party. Lagos State cannot have representations. In fact, the court ordered that Lagos State should be served with all of the proceedings of court and um, all of those. Um, they, and they have had, they have um, created domestic laws. For example, we now have the VAT law in Lagos, just as we have in the River State. State. Uh, the governors have been speaking, you know, the block, the northern block, you know, of governors has been, uh, they have been speaking. The, the southern block as well say, look, we endorse what's going on in Rivers and, and, and um, <laughs> Lagos State. The northern block, you know, the governors, northern governors forum, they're saying, look, we are opposed to what you're doing. But of course, I remember that the, the, man, the chairman of that um, group, which is the, the, the governor of Plateau State, said, like we will wait until mm -hmm. uh, the court decides eventually, but before they, they take a they position, have registered their <laughs> displeasure. So it looks like this is the, the north against the south, and this revenue sharing thing. And some people say but, this but is a revolution. Y y you some see, people say, can, look, can it can it look like that? You, you a can, issue? You can't do that. I think the legal state is very no, smart. I, I said I so because you. the southern governors met and endorsed the action yes, of the actually, Lagos actually, and Lagos state. The southern governors met and said, "Look, we are opposed to it." And you see, I think this is a good test of um, where we all stand as a nation. This is a checkmate for everyone internally. Mm -hmm. The northern governors are afraid to make a position yeah. because they do not want to seem like they are against or for when a court hasn't decided. But they also mentioned the fact that the value-added tax is not the same as a consumption tax, which I'm wondering why there's even a need for a comparison that's in the first place. Kind of value-added comes at the bottom line of the chain, whereby it is going to the end consumer. The sales mm -hmm. that you are mentioning also comes at this form of consumption for the consumer. So value added can be on everything while sales is only on consumable products. So why are we even having a comparison in the first place? Secondly, this will go to show the states that are willing and are ready to test their own capacity to generate revenue for themselves and those that are willing to wait for the federal government to make for them. I think Lagos State will not have a problem in generating Revenue. And they mentioned it also that yes. you know most of the I banks and industries I are in Lagos. Who do you see about Lagos? Lagos State never had issues with generating revenue. What uh -huh. we're saying is that can this stand the test of time? Yeah. Not it. Oh. Yeah. 
I, I do agree with you that you can stand it any day, any time. You think that all of the other states will fold their arms and say, okay, River State no. and Lagos, they have your way. Is it? Whatever they, comes will, to us. They, will, they have no choice. Are you with me? When, there's, when I say they have no choice, they will team up with Lagos State. Lagos State have a team of experts. Before they, they can join the other opposition, they have studied it very, very well. I won't deceive you. Believe me sincerely. I think Lagos State make the right decision. They were smarter state. No, the because immediate, the immediately they go to the their state house to present turn it as the president. Yeah, to present the bill. I, I think by now it's law. I no, mean, yes, yes, it's, 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 it's a sign. It's a sign. Okay, no, what, the point the I'm making up. is not whether or not Lagos State's decision is right or wrong or smart. What I'm saying is that with the, all the other states, particularly the northern states, mm -hmm. would they sit down, fold their arms, and allow this to to, to slide? Of course. We know the matter is well, you know, majorly well, the matter the is politics of it. But I think the major, um, the, the 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 major checkmate for all of this is the House of Representatives and the Senate. Mm -hmm. They will play a critical role as to what Lagos can or cannot do. Because at the end of the day, when the court rules, it's either they retain the current law as a stance within the Nigerian Constitution, or they make amendments that favors one party or the other. So they are still going to be studying events as it is. I'm, I'm sure nobody has made the comments from both houses uh, okay. at this no, moment. No, no, no. So yeah, but I know that there have been appeals. There have been appeals National Assembly to, to, make, to yes. make something. But, you know, as it is today, it favors, you know. And, and so here's where the challenge has to go for all the states. Yes, truly, all of the major banks and industries are domiciled in Lagos. And there's a reason. Of course, Lagos is the capital before uh, even independence. And so many of these banks and industries found it comfortable, especially being on the coastal uh, line, to bring their businesses and start here and then see how they can enter the rest of the country. But you also have to consider the fact that from the rest of the country, Lagos still seems to be the most equipped to generate revenue from other sources rather than waiting for the center to bring in revenue. And we have seen that over time. IGR is a major, major differentiator between Lagos and most of the other states. Lagos in times sometimes doubles what other states, in fact, triples what other states yes. do in IGR. And it's not coming from the port. We know that there's a major leakage from the port. And this is where the argument goes to the federal government. You are chasing the value added tax. How about you focus on industries that many have been saying are leaking? There was a recent um, publication made by the NEITF, and I'm thinking the Mineral Resources um, um, Board, who gave a recommendation that, you know, we are losing billions of dollars daily to bandits, illegal miners who are going into our natural resources, taking our raw materials and taking it abroad. Why hasn't the federal government said, okay, you know what, Zamfara, uh, other states with natural resources, let us intervene and make sure that we have money to spend. The port is a major leakage, as it is today. Where did the federal government say, okay, we are coming here to stop all of these leakages? Millions and billions are lost daily. I was at a recent um, meeting between the tanker, the tanker owners and then the state government, Lagos state government. And if you hear the billions that these guys were mentioning, <laughs> the billions that they say, you but know. The, the, the I, problem I, with the and, money, and the that money is gold round. The money doesn't go to get, the government. My point exactly. That so is, you see individuals who are able to acquire yeah, properties property. in well, the most established parts of Lagos. And they cannot live there because they are working probably somewhere else. And but all those houses are rotting away there. And they are continuing to do that over and over again. How about we block those leakages? And then we begin to generate revenue rather than focusing on those banks and industries who are established mostly in Lagos, Rivers, and Kano, which are the ones that are generating most of the revenue for the FIRS. Okay, gentlemen, let's take a break. When we come back, we'll look at the PDP. Uh, situation and how they have decided where the national chairmanship seat would reside and um, what that uh, pretend for uh, the political um, activities going forward. We'll take another short break when we we'll come back. We'll go into the rest of the issues. Stay with us.
All right, you're welcome back. It's still Strictly Politics on Silver Bird News 24. Ronti Thomas is the Chief Executive Officer, Royal Times. And, of course, Wilson Omoni is also here with us. Ronti, let me take you on on this. The PDP Governors Forum, the PDP Governors, I don't, I don't know whether this meeting was held under mm -hmm. the aegis of the Governors Forum. Bottom line, governors who have been elected on the platform of the People's Democratic Party mm -hmm. met and they had an election to determine where uh, the, chairman the chairmanship um, seat will reside. I mean, the national chairmanship seat of the party. They voted nine to three. You know, we're told that um, all of the governors from the south, including the governor of Benue State, Samuel Otom, voted in favor of having the national chairman coming from the north. Three governors, the governor of um, Bochi State, the governor of Adamawa State and the governor of Taraba State voted to say the chairmanship of the party should come from the south. So, sure. and um, the, um, the, the party has officially announced that um, its, its national chairmanship seat has been zoned to the north. Does this, you know, fires the... Uh, the, the first uh, shot. The, yeah, yeah. The, um, <laughs> the suspicion. You know, the, the two parties. The suspicion the that um, <laughs> indeed uh, the PDP is looking in the direction of the South for a presidential candidate you know, come the, the, 2023. The two parties, they are just like. Don't forget cars. that there are strong men in the PDP who are from the North who have also clearly indicated mm. their interest in the presidency. You see, I, I love their decision. Why, why I love their decision is that the two of them, the two parties, they are just like cats and rats. They are studying each other. And they give us good impression that they are truly Nigerian political party. <laughs> if they can soon it to the north, then I think there's a bright opportunity for whoever in south to contest as the president. So maybe they want to follow the line of the, the ruling party. Mm -hmm. ruling party. <laughs> we said, isn't this going to <laughs> also lead to further alignment and realignment? Meaning that, isn't this going to lead to people exiting the PDP, yeah, people coming into the PDP? But, but you see, just when, for which, this singular decision. Whichever way they had gone, mm -hmm. there was always going to be a fear of alignment. Or the, if, it, if they had voted for the South to have the chairmanship, wouldn't you also be concerned that come 2023, mm -hmm. some governors under the PDP today might no longer be there? Of course, there are some of them that have ambitions. Most of them have done eight years. So, of course, they want positions as ministers. Some of them probably want to run as vice president as well. So now this has played the, the ball right into the hands of the southern governors, mm -hmm. who already were the majority in the party anyway, apart from being the major, you know, as mm -hmm. I said, there are some formidable individuals within the party system who are from the north. But this ultimately plays also into the hands of the All Progressives Congress. They now know what to do come their convention, which was supposed to come anyway, but they moved it forward. And the reason that they gave is a very flimsy one, if you, if you ask me. <laughs> they said that uh, they wanted the their members... to wait for the PDP to decide uh, uh, No, but what they told us officially is that they, wa they wanted them, the, their members, to enjoy Independence Day, and they moved it for two weeks to see the action of the PDP before then. So, you know, this is definitely playing very well into their hands. Let's see what the APC does next. I think, I think with the decision of the PDP, and if gradually the APC follow them, to choose their chairman from the north. North. It means, it's my own opinion, there might be another party that will come. Hmm. That will throw up a candidate yeah, from the north. From the north. Whereas the two big parties Thank you know, you will, will sponsor candidates but, but, from but the south. But you see, where, where that would That's also really lead us, you see, the, there's also a bit of sentiment. You, let's not forget that, you know, um, the position of the Southern Governors Forum mm -hmm. has not been an issue for the Northern Governors. What they said was their issue was the use of the word must. So they are agreeing to a sense that, you know, there should Let be... Let me remind you, the, the Northern <laughs> Elders Forum. Yes. You know, the, the, the statement the other day that, that was causing a lot of um, concern around uh, mm. Akim Baba Ahmed about, look, we have the numbers. And that is We're a fact. To, to contest. <laughs> but, but you see, what the they're word. asking the South to do is to come to the negotiating table and you know, discuss dialogue which where they are they, give, are they really where asking they that? Well, well, what, what, they, what, what they are trying to do is that they wanted the South to know 
that is not constitutionally, that is just a party issue, it's a party agreement. Mm. Are you with me? Did the South say it was in the Constitution? <laughs> no, they did. The they never said. Yeah, they, they never did. put in the Constitution to make that demand. Yeah, they only said, look, we are making a demand as a yeah, block I, I think to, to me, say the presidency should me, shift to the South. They just want to reply the South and no, but What I'm saying is that there's a consciousness within the Northern group Good that, plan. you know what, Buari has done eight years. Mm -hmm. Maybe we should concede to them. But of course, we will not agree to your musts that you use in your statement because we are not compelled to do anything for you. So what will you give us and what will we give you is where they are coming from, I would imagine. So as I said, this plays perfectly into the hands of whoever it is that wants to run from the South. And I think that um, the governors from the PDP have actually played a very, very smart card as this would limit <laughs> any chances, of course, of someone like Atiku. I think Atiku. They, want, they want to, to force place someone so like many. Yes, but so, as so I said, someone like Atiku, who would obviously want to throw his hat in the ring yes. come 2023, mm -hmm. would also have to rethink his steps because yes. once he has a chairman from the north, and also he wants to compete also coming from the north, it will be hard for him to pull off. But don't forget, you know, I thought of something. <laughs> I understand, you know, what's playing out. But you know how all these things work. Um, just two weeks, one week to convention or primaries, yeah. they, you just hear that uh, the national chairman has been removed. Has been removed. And, yeah. the, <laughs> and the, <laughs> vice, the deputy national chairman from the south has taken has over. Has taken over. As acting, <laughs> as acting chairman. Yeah, is, and is, then, is, I mean, automatically anybody from that, the north that can is, contest. That is why the issue that our judiciary should not be using as a right to achieve their deficit, the politicians. If not because of the court order here and there, such a thing will not be easy for them to penetrate all the atrocity. I won't deceive you. If judiciary will have to tax, believe me, the politician cannot be pushing them here and there. But there can also be some political you know, settlements that may not even get to the as courts. far as the court level. Yes. You know. And then you just find that somebody just uh, tells you that. Um, but they want, yeah. to, they want to endorse it with court. And that is where a lot of them go as far as. As any length. I agree with you. To you know, make to, sure to, they to collect and yes. You know, influence, we just uh, go to one kangaroo court and uh, maybe <laughs> magistrate court in uh, Maiduguri and collect another. That the is magistrate like, court is a properly consistent. No, 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 I know. I, I do agree with you. I do <laughs> agree with you. But you, see, you see, they will go as far back as to some court and get an expert, an expert, and get expert order to retain status quo as yes. it is. But I think where this is going is that um, the APC and the PDP might be having candidates coming from the south, which plays perfectly, of course, into the hands of agitators who had also be calling for you know one thing or the other. And I think one thing that's also critical is that you know as much as all of this back and forth is going on, we would like to see those with agitations for separations to also begin to front in terms of their political interests. Of course they have political interests. Definitely. Yes, Why yes, wouldn't yes. they begin to say, this is what we want, rather than calling every single time for a separation? If you are saying, okay, you are being marginalized. It could be a strategy. Well, yes, but if you are saying you are being marginalized, how about you say, we want XYZ person to come from our region and we will support whoever comes from here, rather than always going to bloodletting as we are seeing is being the case all over the country. Why don't we have these people that are calling for a change to actually say, you know what, how about our person runs from the, in this particular part of the country. Okay. I, I, want, I want us to look at one issue from the two parties, both the PDP and the APC. Is it whenever they want to produce, the chairman is from the north. Let's assume the APC also have the chairman from the north. So the president will come from, is it southwest or south? That's another matter altogether. <laughs> altogether. You know, you know they talk about zoning and they talk about micro zoning. You know, so when they get to the south, then will they, they, they will begin to, to do their negotiations about, amongst themselves. About which, which south are we referring to? Of course, and that would also come into the hands of who runs what parties and you know under what uh, structures and in which states. Exactly. Because it's very critical come election period. If you have X Y Z number of states under your party come the election period and you do not. So if you are choosing someone from Southwest, for example, and you have one or two governors that are fronting for you mm. uh, under the PDP, where does that put you come 2023 elections? Okay. <laughs> okay. You, you talked about um, what's going on, you know, with in, in the East and the bloodletting. That's, I, I used your phrase and mm. that takes me to the Anambra issue and it's really sad. The kind of news that we're hearing from Anambra in recent times, uh, really, really sad. And sometimes you're wondering uh, if indeed this, the, 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 peop, the, 
Okay, yeah, the people behind them. Okay, I, I hear we have some issues from Port Harcourt before we move on to the Anambra issue. Let's have that now and then we'll come back and look at uh, developments in Anambra State. I urge citizens of the state to unite in this fight against all forms of terror, intimidation and tyranny. We will not succumb to invaders as I am convinced that no Anambra son will indulge in this kind of heartlessness. I want all those promoting and participating in these violent attacks to leave our state or pay a high price as we will definitely catch up with them. Thank you very much. That's the, the governor of um, Anambra State, uh, Governor Willie Obiano, uh, uh, speaking there concerning the killings and the destruction of property in Anambra State and most recently uh, the killing, the murder of uh, Dr. Chiki Akunyele. Uh, very sad one indeed. And he went ahead to say that, look, um, everything is being done to ensure that um, security operatives, you know, be at their best to ensure that all those behind this are brought to book. On top of that, he announced a 20 million naira bounty. You know, for anyone who is able to bring forth useful information that could lead to the arrest of those behind the killings and destruction in Anambra State. Uh, the other day, there was a battle about the stay at home, no stay at home order. And I remember the governor had to step on the street on one of, the, one of those Mondays to show that, look, you, need, you, can, st you can come out and do your business. And it's been a, a running battle. You know, plus the fact that elections are just uh, a few weeks away in Anambra states. And it, it looks like Anambra is, Anambra and Imo are not really finding it funny at all in terms of um, the challenges of attacks and killings and destructions. Uh, just today, I also heard that uh, there was also another attack on one police facility in see, Anambra state. The, the question has to be, let's start off from the elections that are coming up. Uh, and unless, there's heavy presence of security. And even at that, you would expect that from all that is going on in the States, you would have low turnout of voters come election day. Yes. And that's critically going to affect the people's choice getting into, uh, you know, getting into office. But let's look at the bloodletting now. And it is, the video that I saw, Hakim, was, was one of dismay hmm. in the sense that the person who was recording that video I wouldn't want to say the person has probably seen one or two or one too many in, in incidents like that, but there was obviously no compassion for the individual that was lying almost lifeless mm -hmm. on the floor. He was still breathing. In the video of, of Dr. Chike, you could see that he was adjusting his trousers on the mm -hmm. floor, and that was, it, it was still a cognitive sense of humanity <coughs> left in that man's body. And the attackers, I'm sure, would not have gotten too far away from when that person was recording that video. It's, it's, it's worrying that, you know, Nigerians apart, can do this to other Nigerians. Apart from the election in Anambra, the country generally, let's look at the country generally. And if you zero it to Anambra, especially the governor is the chief security officer. I want the civil. The governor has a big role to play. Don't let us put blame on individual. You are, you are the governor. And what makes you the governor? The security report of every area. Believe me, it's easy for any governor, but in Nigeria today, there are a lot of big men, a lot of personalities that have lost their life. No, you, you see, if you, I, I, you I'm, trying to, I'm trying to situate your argument about the governor. The governor hasn't said he's not the chief security officer of the state. The governor has, in, I believe, has, you know, we've seen many times on TV where he has provided uh, some equipment, you know, for security agents and all that. And the governor, I believe, receives reports, security reports on a daily basis. Right. I mean, so what exactly is, this, is, is the problem the here? Pro the problem is <laughs> just that it's, it's, we have a problem on our hands. I don't think it's the and problem you see, of the is, governor. This is a problem, problem of, of the people. Agitations, uh, uh, of course, IPOB has denied involvement in all of the incidents, and of course, we want to blame. You know, somebody said, could it also be that some criminal or some criminal, criminal minded people well, you see, are using the, you know, the. Uh, what, the, would the what would be the motive of IPOB, you know, to commit crime? Hakim, what would be the motive of killing the doctor of a general hospital that has been giving free medical attention to people in Nambras and, of course, other southeastern states? 
Number one. Number two, from what we have read from the incident of that day, uh, an NSCDC official was also killed just close by. Die. According to what people that were there said, you know, the attackers came almost on a 10 meter walk, killing the NSCDC official who was on a bike. They went on, according to what they said, they saw security operators and imagined that this person was probably from a high and mighty mm. government. Uh, he was only, ugly. and was only on his way into the state to collect an award on behalf of his wife, who is now late, by the way, who served the country tremendously well. Again, I'm not, I'm not. There moving, was also I'm not, no case of anything stolen from within the premises of the individual that was killed. So it wasn't a case of one, an assassination, because if it was, it would have been a single person targeted. Even what one of the reports that I heard said that one of the orderly ran into a store where people were, and the criminals went to the store and said to everybody else that was there to come out that they want only him. And, and so guy, everybody else ran away mm -hmm. and they entered into that store, killed that mm -hmm. orderly in there. So this is not a case of an assassination. Because if it was, you got your target. You yes. can move on. You killed more than seven people within that proximity on the same day. So it is beyond us just looking at it and saying that, you know, some criminals are... Who are these criminals? What are their interests? Thank you very what much. What do they stand to gain by killing these security For operatives? government to provide them cars... Uh, We're not talking about the politics. A, a man with a political equipment. interest. Yes. So, it. so, you know... Is it governor, governor, if you're a governor, are you with me? I could remember the days of uh, Tinumbu as a governor. If there's any, any crime within the area, apart from police reports, you have what you call individual report from the community. Report. Yes. You are a governor. This thing happened almost two weeks. It's the same system of Nigeria. Is it for any governor to come to the air and say, uh, whoever? And 20 million, 20 but million. I can uh, make mention of 20 to 30 people. I provide case. You see, and it has come uh, to the state whereby uh, many people are beginning to redeploy their families. I'm using the word redeploy now because they are bringing their families out of the east. It is becoming worrisome, Akin, that yes. you cannot travel to the east. We are two months away from, from the Ember period, which we know is a time for most of mm. our, our, our Igbo brothers, brothers to go and yes. celebrate to their family. But as it is today, many of them cannot go. Generally, somebody offered, somebody asked me you know, to join a trip to Benin. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. You consulted with your wife. I, <laughs> I was, mm. my wife, they left, I was praying for them. <laughs> <laughs> Back, so well, you know, and you know, it's, really, it's really not um, funny at all. This, this is, it has come to a point where the federal might has to tell in the East so that the country stops losing because we are losing not just lives, we are losing money. We are, this is causing inflation in several other yes. areas that we do not know of. If men and women cannot come out on a Monday morning to do their business, which is their typical working day yes. in the East, it means that there is a problem. If they cannot sell on Monday and they have to sell their market, which has come as a huge cross to them, mm -hmm. they will increase the money on Tuesday. Yes, so you are the one that's going to buy for something that should have been 15 naira. You're not paying 17 naira for it naira. because they could not come out on Monday. Exactly. That means they're going to also, you that are buying the product, will put the report, the, 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 the repercussion of the cost on, on your, your next, service. on your service yeah, that you're providing. That so right? we are having all of this skyrocketing, and this is also affecting our inflation rates. We are seeing that our Naira is going down and down every day. No, These are reasons that are affecting it. We have to address security, and the federal might have to come quickly on the East. Okay, let's take another break. I believe the last break, when we come back, we'll look at um, counterterrorism and all of the effort of the military and um, all of the other security agencies on this matter. We'll take a short break, and we'll be right back.
getting you closer to the people. We take the pressure off you, each with his uniqueness. It's no holds barred. Say it the way it is. With the unitary system of government, people will steal our money in the state, they will use the federal apparatus to intimidate them. was built to shock, timid, myopic, Mongo package, Mumu Nigerians out of their way of thinking. Welcome back to the home stretch. This is Strictly Politics on Silver Bed News 24. Ronty Thomas is here. He's the Chief Executive Officer, Royal Times. Wilson Omoni is also here. We're looking at all of the big issues in the polity. And um, let's now consider, gentlemen, the report by the Acting Coordinator of Defense Media Operations, Brigadier General Bernard Oyeku, who told us now that. Um, the military over the last couple of weeks have killed 85 terrorists. Right. They have also uh, taken out 43 or arrested 43 of alleged collaborators mm -hmm. with the terrorists. Does this mean that indeed the fight, the counter-terrorism operation is making headway? The kind of report that has come out from uh, Kaduna, Kasina, uh -huh. Sokoto, even Zamfara, mm -hmm. Niger State in recent times. Uh, can we say for sure that we are winning the war? Doesn't take away the fact that it looks like there's some high profile you know, oppression is going on yeah. and some work is going on, really. Uh, but are we there yet? Mm. 85 terrorists. You know, sometimes when I see these figures, you know, sometimes I just, I, <laughs> you, know, as, you know, the journalist in me asks the question, okay, 85 terrorists. So you kill 85 people and then you now check the identity and discover that 85 of them are terrorists. Or you storm a camp and kill everybody in the camp. I mean, how do you come? How do you come about the figure eighty-five who, 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 terrorists? Who wait for a retired military person. Who identifies, come on. Who identifies <laughs> all the body killed? As yeah. So, I don't. These are just some of the the questions, you know. But I mean, it is easy for us to just be excited and to yeah. just be happy. Oh, they are killing them. Uh, so we are good. We are getting better. But then there are still some of these questions. Well, the questions that you have raised are one. Um, let's also look at the implications of what these actions have had to be mm. for the people. Let's start off from the telecommunications ban or restriction in some of these yes. states like Zamfara. Okay. And now we hear the same is being applied in Kaduna. Okay, just before you go into uh, those, I, I hear we have the, uh, the speech of uh, Brigadier General Bernard Onyeku, where he gave the report of, of what I just said. Now let's listen to him and then we can you know, put this in perspective. States of Islamic State of West African Province and Boko Haram terrorists and their collaborators were neutralized in a coordinated airstrike executed by the air components of Operation Harding Kai on 26 September 2021. This was achieved at Daba Masara, north of Lake Chad, in Kuka, local government area of Borono State, from where the criminal elements lodged attacks on own troops locations and innocent civilians in the area. Cumulatively, a total of 85 Boko Haram and Islamic West African province terrorists were neutralized. 43 terrorists, including their collaborators, logistics suppliers, were arrested in the course of the various operations. Also, a total of 121 assorted weapons, including submachine guns, HK-21, AK-47, and locally made rifles with magazines were recovered. Okay, you welcome back. Um, you just um, are listening to Brigadier General Bernard Oyeku, the Acting Coordinator of Defense Media Operations, uh, giving us uh, the scorecard 
of how far the military has gone in the counter-terrorism um, operation that they're doing. You were talking about, you know, some of, for example, in the Olo Zanfara shutdown of telecommunication services. We're here in parts of Kaduna State also, mm -hmm. there's been a shutdown of telecommunication services. Right. Uh, and this has affected many of those doing businesses there. I was watching a report yesterday night and, um, you know, many people were queuing up at their banks to make withdrawals because most of the POSs are also not available to be used because, anymore. Because the POS, because POS needs, used, uh, needs their SIM cards yes, to get so money can, for yeah. anyone that needs to do transfer. So now you have to go to your bank and write on a teller for them to give you your money. <laughs> <laughs> so that's the manual method that we have had to go back to in Zamfara State. Mm -hmm. Apart from that, there's also the sale of petrol to those who need it. Because now, if you are a commercial uh, motorcycle rider, you are no longer able to have access to petrol anymore to ride your motorcycle because yes. why? They banned the sale outrightly on all motorcycles in the state. Yes. They've also stopped saying from going into jerry cans and other falls, which means if you're operating a generator before, yes. and for you need your, your jerry can to bring, Maybe for you your probably have to now carry your generator yourself. For you have to go with your generator to go and buy fuel. And how much fuel can you buy your generator at once? <laughs> <laughs> Except for the 15 meters that most big gents can It depends on their security report, but most of the atrocity mm. that they committed in all this state we are talking about, especially they do with bike, and they move fast. You are right, but I'm just looking at the implications of what the actions have had to be over on, 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 the, on the ordinary on, people on the ordinary who are innocent, who are not. Who are when when you are looking at ordinary people, you also look at the government way to mm. tackle mm. the security, and that's why they said they should go to that so that they can reduce it. You can. What happened in Lagos State when they stop these Okada people in some certain area? You find out there are less crime being committed. 60 to 70 percent of atrocity in all these states we are talking about being committed by either on bike because it's easy for them to move with it. It's not easy for them to jump in the car mm. because there are some certain areas where you have go slow and you have no choice. But when you are on bike, if they can be able to control bike, they believe they can reduce it to some certain extent and they'll be able to achieve their aim. I didn't blame government for well, that. Yes, you're right. Uh, of course, you will not blame the government. And, um, but also, you know, what this means is that, as I said, l uh, human capital is being lost uh, daily uh, in those areas. Uh, you also have to consider the fact that, you know, um, the mode of operation hasn't been quite clear. And it appears that, they, of course, the mentioned amongst those that were arrested are uh, sponsors, informants of, do, of these bandits, which means that these people have collaborators within the society. Yes, yes. We need to also begin to deploy our information gathering system to attack directly rather than shutting down the entire system to do the operation. Oh, okay, That's I think they have deployed that. That's why they have for the three collaborators. Yes, for, that, that, were, that were also arrested. <laughs> I saw yeah, a video, yes. Hakim, and uh, you know, the, a few women were arrested with bags. So they thought they were just regular travelers. Mm. They didn't check the bags and the you supplies see, for you terrorists. See in nylon bags, they've tied petrol for terrorists to use. Okay. So these are things we that have, you know, we, we need to question and see. Time is of essence. <laughs> Thank you very much, Chair. Uh, Thank you very much for being a part of the show. Um, it's been a very, very interesting episode. As usual, Ronti Thomas has been our guest on the show today. Ronti Thomas is a chief executive officer, Royal Times a journalist and a friend of the house. Thank you very much Thank you. for coming. Yeah. We'll see. Mm -hmm. Omoni, has, <laughs> in fact, he has been on fire today. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much for being on the show. Always a pleasure, Hakim. Uh, yeah. Thank you very much to the entire production crew. Let's do this again sometime next week. My name is Hakim Ishola. Bye-bye now.